I've seen it happen even amongst my peers that I feel like we're really tight. Like, mm. where it'll be like, uh, oh, what are you doing today? Nothing. And then I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to an audition later. And then I show up to the audition and they're at that audition. And I'm like, why didn't you mention that? Wow. You know, and it's like, and that kind of thing kind of like, it, it, it used to hurt me. Now I'm like, okay. Mm. But that's where things start to like, kind of the gray area that I'm talking about where mm. it's like, why do you feel like you can't tell me? Why do you feel like, do you feel like if I'm there now you're going to not get that opportunity? For me, it's never been that. For me, it's like if we both go, at least we know that two, peop- two people are going for the job that deserve to be there mm. rather than some person getting it who doesn't even know how to break and is doing a few tricks or something. Yes. <laughs> Killer Killer Official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. We can talk about it afterwards then. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast, live and direct, central London, or central as you need to be, could be, choose to be, you don't want to be anywhere else. It's bad for your health, not worth it. Yeah, you can't afford it. <laughs> Our sponsors, the mighty GK Nifty Heads, have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hoddle Wars Summer 2024. <laughs> Big shout out to all the shares and cares people from the jump that have been looking after us and uh, supporting us, sharing is caring, all that good stuff. Uh, today, we have a very special lady in the house. Um, someone that I have worked alongside numerous times now. Uh, versatile in the breaking is she to the point that she's not only an adjudicator and a judge, but she's also well versed in the media. And it's a privilege and pleasure to have her sitting next to me because with that kind of expertise, we're going to have a good chat. It's Candy in the house. Hey! <laughs> what an intro. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Better to see you. We were just kind of chopping it up before uh, press and record about, you know, how hard it is being city folk. Yes, hustlers. Hustlers. Is that part of the DNA? I think when you are from a big city, for sure. It's mm. it's like it comes with the territory. If yeah. you don't know how to move fast, then you're not going to make it. Yeah. I, I often, I think people get it slightly mixed up with street and hustle and general living. Like if people adapted, adopted a street mentality mm-hmm. to their work rate, then surely that you know mediocrity would not be there yeah well i think with the street mentality there's no failure Mm. there's no option to fail Mm. it's there um and then if you do fail you know you've got to just get back up and keep it moving because you just have no choice yeah so i think yeah the hustle mentality and the street mentality go hand in hand but they're not necessarily the same thing because you can be a hustler and not have a street mentality. Mm, yeah, you can, can't you? Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of hustlers out there, mm. billionaires and yeah. <laughs> and guys who grew up in like Ivy League schools, and <laughs> I would still call them hustlers. But the street mentality is a bit different because I think uh, most of those people haven't really experienced the kind of loss and the kind of like self uh, deprecation that we we grew up with <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. street. You know, I, I do know what you mean. Uh, it's, it's the school of hard knocks. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's, um, a scary fact, particularly when in a, in a, I guess in a, I guess the analogy is a crabs in a bucket when everyone's on that grind and everyone has had that, um, life impact happen to them. Yeah. It makes things pretty dangerous, doesn't it? It does. Because I think then where the street mentality comes in is that crabs, crabs in a bucket mentality where you don't feel like you can all win. Mm. It feels like there has to be one winner. Mm. And it's kind of that the thing you've been taught in hip hop as well. Like where you battle and there has to be the top dog. Winner, loser. Winner, loser. Whereas like what I see with now that I'm in different um, circles is that a lot of people have that mentality of like, how can we win or all, all win together? Oh, you're making money. I'm making money. Let's make more money together. Mm. You know, so... I think if we start adopting that mentality, mm. we're going to get a lot further mm. in this game. And I think some people have within the scene. It's not everybody, mm. but 
definitely in breaking that mm. that needs to be a better and bigger mentality. Yeah, I, I would argue the case with MCing and and certainly graffiti and um, beatboxing. I don't know. There's some there's some elements to hip hop which I think adopt really well that the the collective mentality. Yeah, you know, breakers yeah. and crews, but um, beatboxers kind of do it. Yeah, um, I think in certain settings. Mm. So yeah, when you're in a crew, you know you want you you want your crew to come up together and you mm. want them to win together. Mm. But I think once uh, you start bringing money into the picture, <laughs> things start to change. Uh, so speaking from an expert of experience, have you seen it happen before? I mean, yeah, I, I I've seen it happen even amongst my peers that I feel like we're really tight, like. Mm. Where it'll be like, uh, oh, what are you doing today? Nothing. And then I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to an audition later. And then I show up to the audition and they're at that audition. And I'm like, why didn't you mention that? Wow. You know, and it's like, and that kind of thing kind of like, it, it, it used to hurt me. Now I'm like, okay. Mm. But that's where things start to like, kind of the gray area that I'm talking about where mm. it's like, why do you feel like you can't tell me? Why do you feel like, do you feel like if I'm there... Now you're going to not get that opportunity. For me, it's never been that. For me, it's like if we both go, at least we know that two, peop two people are going for the job that deserve to be there. Mm. Rather than some person getting it who doesn't even know how to break and is doing a few tricks or something. Yes, yes, you know? yes, yes. That's interesting because there's a psychological side to that. That Obviously, from you being the reciprocant, um, uh, you're really questioning the moral compass of the person that really should have told you the other person is looking at it from a point of view of well if i tell if i tell candy she's gonna know that i she's gonna know i'm gonna be there therefore there could be a handicap and she would excel in something that perhaps i'm more weaker at mm. but overall particularly with auditions People just book people because they look good or because they're deserving of something that is unique. Mm -hmm. How does it work in someone's head to keep that quiet? It's weird to me. Yeah, because at the end of the day, when you start becoming an experienced person in this world, you like you said, you do realize that an audition has nothing to do with who's better or not or who has more skills or not. Sometimes... It could just be simply based on the fact that you're shorter than someone <laughs> or exactly, or you have a look that they want or you just sound a little better on camera. Or, yeah. You know, like or that day you're testing really right on, on film. It's, there's so many factors that have really nothing to do with who you are and what mm. your skills are. Mm. But I think we make that mistake and and then it becomes that like, oh, I can't tell her because she might take my spot. Well, yeah. No. Silly, silly people. Silly. Come on. Unification for the nation. Um, but that does bring me to my next point because, you know, you, you judge and, you're, you're, and, and you're, you're, of, you're within the institution, right? Mm -hmm. Pick up undisputed, of course. Um, yeah, so what do you think as a judge, and this is by no means a trap into, it, into your psyche, like how... how what do you look for? What what is it a diff what is the archetype breaker to you where you're just like, yo, yeah, if they had that of that person and that of that and that of that person, that of that, that's like the ultimate, like uh that's the ultimate B boy, B girl avatar. I don't think there is one because if there was, then it really wouldn't be any fun. Like <laughs> you would just have this robotic situation. So mm. I really don't think there's a perfect. Most of the people that I really like are imperfect. Are imperfect. Yeah. God, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Like they, they just have a. It's just a way that they do something that's almost a little grimy, a little raw, and mm. and it's what makes breaking breaking. Like if it was so clean and perfect, it'd be gymnastics, mm. really, or it'd be something else. It wouldn't. Hip hop is that, you know, hip hop mm. comes from the Bronx where like I always say it, it was burning down. These kids didn't have anything. They were literally in the gutter mm. just trying to make something out of nothing. Mm. And it's what I tell people when they're like, oh, but I don't have this and I don't have that. And I'm like, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Less because, is more. Yeah, because that's what hip hop comes from. Mm. Lack. Mm. And then you create something. And like for me, when I started, I didn't I wasn't allowed to break really no wow so I had to like sneak around and do it um I had no money 
So I used to beg to be put in dance classes. I wanted to be a studio girl. Mm-hmm. My mom was like, I don't have that kind of money. She told me straight up. She's mm-hmm. like, ballet? Are mm-hmm. you kidding me? <laughs> no, we don't. Wow. She's like, we don't do that. We don't come from that kind of family. Mm. Um, so I really had to find something that didn't cost money. And that was breaking that I found. But my mom hated it. She was Damn. like, breaking? What? You're around a bunch of boys? And you've, you're putting your hair on the floor and like hair is huge in mm-hmm. Dominican culture. My mm-hmm. mom's a hairdresser. Wow. So, oh, well, so there's some things you, that are meant to be kept sacred. Which is, uh, yeah. Especially if your mom's a hairdresser. Wow. She was like, it's dirty. What are yeah. you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, there was something about it that when I did it, um, I had to be really in it. Mm-hmm. And so the things that were going on in my life that I didn't love or didn't want to face maybe at that point would go away in those times mm. where I was breaking. Mm. And I think like that's also probably what happened when it was when hip hop was happening and being created. It it gave these kids something to to turn to. Escapism. Escapism, yeah. And so yeah, when you ask me about the archetype, there is there isn't one. It's just who's who's creating something from mm. what they've got mm. and what are they doing with the music? Mm. Really, cuz that's what it comes down to like you could have all the moves in the world, but if you're not connecting with that music either, mm. then so there's a lot of points. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. Because in this world of excess, and we have everything at our disposal. Um, and actually, it's about narrowing down the field of what actually f- turns you on to certain things that makes you want to throw down and get your hair dirty and go go for it. Yeah, for sure. <sighs> tell me about your uh, upbringing. Tell me about, tell me about the story. <laughs> the story of Candy. Where did it all begin for you, love? Um, I started breaking when I was 16-ish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, my cousin was... first. My first exposure to hip-hop was being a New Yorker. You're mm-hmm. just around it. Mm-hmm. So I didn't really know I was in hip-hop mm-hmm. until it was pointed out to me by the graffiti writers in my high school. Right. And uh, and they were like, "You do you know what real hip hop is?" And they were, really? <laughs> they started playing. Uh, at the time, it was they were G checking you, like right? yeah. Well, they were, and and if you know New York graph writers, mm-hmm. they're the meanest people on the planet. <laughs> 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 you know, they will rag on you all day long, and you know, uh, and actually, I appreciate it because it gave me the tough skin I needed before mm-hmm. I started breaking. Mm-hmm. And they actually exposed me to um, most deaf. Talib Kweli, mm. that side of hip hop. I was used to the more mainstream stuff you heard on the, the radio. Stuff. Yeah, really kind of but yeah, um, listening to Black Star was like a game changer for of me. Of course, um, the whole rockers catalog, really. Yes, crazy. So they exposed me to that, and then my cousin started dating a b boy, <gasps> and he was like, uh, "I'm going to take you to a jam." To my cousin, and she was like, "Come with me. I know you like." dancing so just come mm. and i went with her and i remember the two crews were floor lords and breaks crew in the final okay. battle these are two new york crews at the time mm-hmm. well actually floor lords is from boston but these are two crews that were just the top dogs in the east coast at the moment god that's good so i'm watching uh, el nino when he's like nine years old in this battle what? yeah he was a little boy and his brother and lean rock like these guys that are now so how old were you i was 15 so you were just you must have been spellbound yeah i was watching it firstly the music was really impressive to me i love the music i was like oh i really love mm. this i want to mm. dance how do i dance to this and i remember i i'll never forget it i don't remember who he was but this guy said to me like oh yeah you want to learn you don't want to learn. Girls just do this for their boyfriends. They don't stick to breaking. And that's like the worst thing you could tell me. If you tell me I can't do something mm. and I'm going to do it and wow. take pictures. <laughs> Who is this guy? Comment below. Damn. So wow. I was like, okay, I can't do it. Yeah. Just watch. Um, and literally after that, it was like an obsession. I And this is back in the beginning of the internet <laughs> where there's AOL chat rooms. Okay. Did you guys have yeah, those yeah, here? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm looking for all these people that I saw at the jam, and I'm like, where do they, where do they hang out? I would go around like their hangout spots, their high schools, and just be like, let me hopefully run into them. And I started to finally find like practice spots, YMCA's, things like that. Then I emailed Ken Swift. As you, as you do. <laughs> <laughs> fast forward, go fast forward, go for it. <laughs> I was like, oh, Ken Swift's the guy. Cool. Yeah. Hey, hey, Ken Swift, <laughs> can I come train with you? Didn't reply to me. Oh, man, that was um, just in a moment. Okay. But no, it didn't even like, 
hit me because I didn't realize who he was. Mm. I was just like, okay, that's who you, that's who it is. And that's who I'm going to get. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Um, And so through that, through that, like seeking of connection, I found uh, Rockefeller at an after school program that she did. Really? Um, Yeah. So she started to teach me the very, very basics. Wow. You really were, you were really built on the culture. Yeah. I was really like. I just feel like I've always been the kind of person that when when I'm told like no you can't or mm. or when people don't believe in me it like fuels me mm. it really does like it doesn't deter me like yeah I might be upset about it in the moment but mm. then I'm like oh I'll show you yeah. I'm a really I'll show you kind of person yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well I was now not so much because I feel like it's been a long time and I've kind of paid my dues in in that sense I think you're always paying your dues but I I just don't. I don't feel the need to prove things mm. anymore. Yeah. But yeah, at that time I was I was just like, yeah, no, I'm going to I'm going to figure out how to do this and I'm going to and then it became like I'm going to be one of the best. Mm. Like the obsession grew. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I forgot I was like that. I've do actually, you forget now? I f- I forget all the time and then I see people I went to high school with that don't even break yeah. and they're like I remember when I met you and you were like, I'm Candy, I'm a B-girl and I'm going to be the best. Like, I literally used to tell people that. Yeah, yeah, good. (laughs) Serves you right. Yeah. It was, was, it's when I look back on it, I'm like, oh, cringe. Why? Because who says that? (laughs) Who who says I'm going to, I'm a B-girl and I'm going to be the best, like out loud. (laughs) Yeah, but I I think that, well, there's that, it's, it's um, prophesizing, isn't it? It's like, you know, uh, uh, speak it and it will happen, you know? Yeah. I've got a real sense of that. I think if you're not saying it, you're thinking it, but, you know? Yeah. And I, and I'm a hundred percent a believer in you manifest mm. the things that you, you want in your life, whether it's speaking them into existence, thinking them into existence, but all of it is energy. And, mm. and you know, if you don't believe it, who else is going to believe it? Right. Yeah. Um, so a lot of jams, going through teens, a lot of different events and being coached. Yeah, um, I went from learning from Rockefeller to finally finding Ken Swift and learning from him. <laughs> Amazing. Yes. <laughs> yes, there is pot of gold. Good. <laughs> and meeting Alien Ness as well wow. when I was about 16. And Alien Ness became like my dad. Like wow. He was, um, I used to literally go sit in his living room his uh, girl at the time used to cook dinner for us and then we'd just train or watch videos and it just became like I was just engulfed in hip hop. Like there's pictures of my family in Christmas and they're all dressed up and I'm wearing like a head spin hat. <laughs> so I'm like really in it. Um, and for my 16th birthday when my mom, where, where most Latin girls are having like a sweet 16 or 15, <laughs> I was like, can I get a ticket to go to my first out of state jam? Like. That's what I asked for. Wow. So, and, and I did. I went to uh, Scribble Jam. Scribble Jam. Legendary <laughs> scrib- Scribble Jam. Yeah. So. And what was that cool. like? I mean, like, I know, these are just folklore events. So, I, you know, we don't get much people that build a Scribble Jam on this show. Tell me about that. Um, I went to Scribble Jam and I met uh, Idea mm. when I was there, Good which kid. was pretty cool. Like, That's at crazy. the time, I didn't even know who I was meeting. I yeah. was just like, oh, you're a sick MC. Yeah. <laughs> um. Who else did I meet? Uh, sl- what is it? Slug. Was Slug. It? Atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. yeah atmosphere. Right. Yeah. I Amazing. met him, and I just remember just being like, not knowing who these people mm. were, but mm. just being like, they're so dope. Mm. Like, and knowing that there was something special about what was happening, mm. but not being like fangirl at all because I was still not aware. No. You know. So, um, and and just like hitting ciphers yeah. so hard. Really. Yeah, just like that, because someone told me, like, you have to hit the ciphers. So I was just in them. I was whack, but I was just getting out there. Yeah. Um, the thing is with your first jams, and I, I, as you were talking, it took me back to my, my first jams, and it was almost like this sense of inclusion. Like, everyone, it was all, it was like, from what I remember, I was so blown away by pe- my surroundings feeling the way I did. So it wasn't like these people were on stage to me. They could be anyone. The fact that they were there 
and that they felt what we felt and that cipher was everything to them in the same way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think that's what really was beautiful about hip hop in that time. This was back in 2002, 2003, mm. was that moment of like ciphers were really a vibe. Mm. Um, jams were jams. Like, you know, there was just such a great atmosphere. Everybody was in it because they really loved it. Mm. And there wasn't a, such a performative aspect to it mm. like there is now. Mm. It feels more stagey now. Mm. Which I just miss vibing with people. <laughs> and and the ciphers wouldn't just be breakers. Like there'd be MCs in the ciphers watching. Like mm. you're just vibing with people. Um and I kind of I kind of feel that when I when I've gone to one of your parties recently, mm -hmm. like it's just nice to be in a crowd where it's mixed. It's not yeah. just like this is a breaking circle. Yeah, or, yeah, 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 yeah. And you don't even really get breaking like no. ciphers anymore. You don't. So um so I'm really like grateful that I got to come up in a time period where the cipher was really important. If yeah. you weren't ciphering, you weren't doing. Isn't it funny that the, 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 the whole thought of like ciphers, it's particularly like MC breaking ciphers. You know, they're few and far between. It's actually quite daunting the idea that uh, that raw essence, the thing that the main driver that makes people better and excel, mm. that whisper on the corner like yo did you see that the other did you see what they did do you know what i mean like mm -hmm. i would hate that to, to be gone it's really sad too because i feel like that's also what made it fun for those who weren't winning the event like mm. if you didn't qualify for the next round then you were like all right it's cool i'm mm. going to cypher mm. or you would catch somebody if you felt like you didn't win you could catch someone in a cypher and, mm. and kind of like uh make up for whatever you feel you didn't do mm. Um, and I feel like just just that aspect needs to really come back because right now it's become more about the win. Mm. And you can see it in the way people dance. It's yeah. reflected. In really, that. you can see that? Yeah, you can because rounds are like a minute and a half long. <laughs> like sometimes I'm like, you could have gotten up like 20 seconds ago, mate. Like Really? Yeah. And, <sighs> and to judge that is sometimes really hard because... After a while, you start getting fatigued. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 100%. You know? Because it's like one after the other, the other, the other. And then, yeah. And that's not really what the mind can take. <laughs> yeah. And you need moments. Yeah. You need moments. I always tell people, like, create moments, please. Because yeah. that those moments are what makes or breaks this battle. And if you're not making moments, it becomes very monotone. It's just like telling a story. It's just like I'm seeing, I'm mm. sure. Um, Definitely beatboxing. Yeah. Same sounds over and over again. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, you have to have like those peaks and dips and plateaus a little bit. And and you have to do that within l a minute or less. Like mm. if you're going longer than a minute, I'm just like, yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, as a judge, that's what I'm looking for. Moments, mm. really make those moments. See, we're talking to judge inside the place. Come on. <laughs> um, okay, so you mentioned ballet earlier uh, and uh, gymnastics was, was hinted uh, so far as that purest aspect of uh, of uh, of breaking, you know, you, the imperfection stuff. How how much do you study other areas, particularly in your teenage years? How 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 much influence did you take f to make those peaks and troughs, you know, from other disciplines? I didn't really. I'm like, I always I I always took pride in the fact that I was like a straight, straight B girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I never did gymnastics. I was never in a studio. I straight learned what made breaking which was the foundation so and and it was something that ken swift always said to me like um you have all these other art forms but what makes breaking breaking is footwork <laughs> is foundation if you're not doing that you're not breaking <laughs> so for me that became like my bread and butter i was like you know i might not be able to fly i might not be able to do flips but I'm not a gymnast. I'm a mm. B-girl. Mm. So what I'm going to be really dope at is dancing, um, connecting to the music, and having a foundation that's unquestionable. Mm. Um, and I think that purest uh, approach is kind of what got me far because then I learned how to take little bits from here and there mm. and bring them together to make a really like dope round. Um, but yeah, like I didn't really have any... any ver I had variety, but uh, what I was taught always was like, if you learn, if you learn like a windmill, if you have at least one head spin, if you have a swipe, you can take that and always bring it together using the foundation. 
using footwork because footwork will always tie these things together. Mm. Uh, and then and when and there's so much that you can do in footwork. It it literally once you learn the foundation, you can just create different things. And foundation never dies. Mm. So now that I'm 37 years old, it when I start breaking and I can't really. Let's say I've taken a long break and I'm not able to do power. Mm -hmm. I can always do my foundation. See, you don't know the 37, by the way, my dear. You don't know the 37. Uh, <laughs> sticking, <laughs> sticking, with the, uh, sticking with the foundation. So, because to, to the layman's out there, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and hopefully there are some out there, big up yourselves, uh, because, you know, this is a multi-genre platform. Uh, the, the foundation is the thread. The thread that is instinctively, well, essentially it's your style. And you you work that foundation into your own DNA, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But define define a, a moment in foundation. What what would you say that that is the that's a core, that's a core element of foundation? Footwork. Okay, 100%. so define define the footwork a little bit more. So footwork usually you'll see uh it looks like people like you're running around your body. Most people learn a six step first, mm -hmm. then you'll get like CC shuffles. But it's mostly what you're doing when you when you see breakers with their hands on the ground and their feet are just like doing different movements. Mm -hmm. um, to me, footwork has a specific form. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you get a ballerina, she's gonna know how to do all the basic movements, the first position, second position, third, same thing for a breaker. You're gonna know that there's a certain way to sit in your footwork. There's a certain form to it. They, you have to, like if I call out a CC, you should know how to do that. If I call out sweeps, you should know how to do that. If I call out a six step, you should know how to do that and you should know how to do it with technique and form. And to be hey. honest, huh? Huh? yeah. And to be honest, that is what separates to me the the greats mm -hmm. from the okay good mm. from the good you know mm. the good from the great that is what could make or break your round when i'm watching you as a judge and not that i'm saying oh you have to have you have to do foundation no but if you know what it is your eye is able to see who has it and who doesn't oh yeah because you've got the knowledge you know yeah and that to me is really key like Sometimes I'll be watching a battle and someone will be doing something so incredible, but their transitions will just look really off because I'm like, you don't have any technique. Your technique is, your technique is flawed. <laughs> you, know, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, like the Kung Fu films. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> and so, um, for, and sometimes people don't get it. They're like, oh, but I did more. And I'm like, mm, less is more sometimes. Mm. Less is actually more a lot of times mm. in breaking. Uh, and for me, that that's what makes quality as well. Quality, yes. Uh, yeah, over quantity. For sure. Uh, it, it, in skateboarding, well, it's, uh, there's others, but in skateboarding, as you get older, you realize how much damage you've presented to your body uh, over the years. I would, I would say that probably could be considered the same for breaking, depending on how hard you went in. But um, w would you say like a, a fine wine that 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 thread that DNA of breaking that allows for a maturity, do you think that gets better as you get older? Yes, um, I think it gets better, but I think you need to stay consistent and stay in practice. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to practice every day, mm. but you still have to refine it mm. because your body changes over the years. Mm. You get older, you put on a little weight, mm. maybe, especially for women. We have kids, our bodies start to shift a little bit. Mm. Um, for example, when I was first breaking, I had no hips. I was just like a kid. Mm. Then I had a child. Now I've got mm. some hips to work with. So mm. now I'm training and I'm noticing, oof, my my bum is a little lower to the ground than mm. it was. And I'm oh, yeah. very big on form. So mm -hmm. I'm like, ooh, my form is not looking great. So I've got to like refine it. Mm. So, it, yeah, um, for example, my stepdad, who's from New York, mm. he'll do a six step. It looks technically horrible, but he could still do one because he's he learned that when he was a kid and he did it so many times. But obviously, it's just it doesn't look great when he does it anymore because he hasn't refined it. He's not done it. He does it maybe at a party here or there. Mm. Um, 
But I bet if you practiced it, it would just start to look nice again. Because mm. you still, it's like muscle memory. You've got it in you. Yeah. But you've got you've to gotta refine it. Just like riding a bike, you know? Yeah. And beatboxing, obviously, with your voice, you know, I started when I was like seven or eight years old, to be fair. But, you know, as you get older, you go through puberty, you go through aging, and, you know, you drink a lot and you shout a lot and you do life. Mm -hmm. Then things start deepening. And sometimes, actually... Um, I'm not sure whether this is the same for, you know, women after pregnancy or not. I mean, Stephanie seems to just be like... <laughs> She's a monster. <laughs> how did you... How did I... She said that, that she had she had a child and then all of a sudden was just like a lot more... Had a lot more uh, agility. Mm -hmm. And that that's the thing too. Like, everyone's different. Yeah. You know, like when I had a, a baby, I really wanted to just jump back in. But I had a C-section. Mm -hmm. Which is literally major surgery. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so you're taking about six months off. Yeah. And then you've got to adjust to like your abs having been detached from your body for. Yeah. So you've got to rebuild your core. You've got to, you know, and it takes time. Yeah. And, um, whereas like Stephanie, I feel like she had the baby and was back in like a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I'm like, I wish, you know, but it's all it, she had her baby naturally. Mm -hmm. So it's just it's a different kettle of fish. Mm -hmm. But what I think that time has shown us is that it doesn't matter what you're going through. If you persist, mm -hmm. you can get back to it. Like the only limitation really is yourself in mm -hmm. your mind. Um, and shoot, I have a friend uh, um, who breaks. He's got one leg and he amazing wow. so i'm like i think i've seen him yeah he's killer yeah, yeah. so muka he's amazing muka, um, that's it yeah. yeah and even uh, one of the guys in my my crew uh Bernina, he's also um he's got he's got a disability it, i don't even like calling it that because he's amazing like he mm. just they Super they, always, human. they have a, a model and they say no excuses no limits mm. and i literally tell myself that every time i think like oh, i'm getting too old or something mm. I'm like shut up you've got You've got all the ability. Yeah. You just need to get to it. Yeah, yeah. You I know? think a lot of people forget that. I think that's that's just inherent in, in us. Mm. That um sticking with your C section. So, you know, you, there there could be every reason for you to go, Oh man, it's gonna take forever. But in a in a in a twist of something, that could be the most positive change to your pattern of thinking that resulted in a whole different type of training that mm -hmm. re-up for a second that self-assessment i mean sometimes that is the best moment in your in your life right 100 percent. like after my c-section i actually realized that i never actually looked at the fitness aspect of breaking so i got really into my fitness and i started training in the gym and i actually started doing fitness competitions no which was like um amazing because so then once i got into that because i was like I just have such a competitive mindset that for me, I can't just, it's really weird. I can't just take things on and just do them. Really? I have to like do them to the max. It's like my mom's annoyed at me all the time. She's like, <laughs> why do you not just have a hobby? And I'm like, I don't know. Cause once I get into something, I just want to be like really good at it, you know? Um, and so I got really into the fitness part and then that made me learn about nutrition. And in turn, now that I'm training again and I'm breaking more again because I mm. feel so inspired by people around mm. me, seeing girls like Stephanie and mm. Solid and um, just judging all the time. Mm. You just see this high level, especially the B girls. I'm just so impressed and mm -hmm. inspired by them that I'm able to now approach it from a very intelligent side. Whereas before I approached it from, a, I need to just get away from life and break. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, no, I actually want to be better than I've ever been. Mm. And I know that there's another approach to this. There's a fitness approach. I can get fit. I can eat better. I can get lighter. Um, and so, yeah, it just becomes a different kettle of fish in that sense where I'm just, I just want to be the best me. Like mm. now I'm not battling anymore. I'm not competing. It, it's not about proving it to anyone. Mm. It's really just like, yeah, everybody thinks my peak was back then, but they don't even mm. realize that now mm. my peak could mm. actually be now. Exactly. Exactly. Another rotation around the sun. Mm. Um, growth and um, passion and knowing the core elements that allow that. Yeah. Do you... Um, because breaking is the, is the main driver for you. Like, that's the religious 
aspect to mm-hmm. it because you know that's your that's your um, north star. Mm-hmm. So all of these things enable. Isn't it crazy that the things that you're most passionate about all stem from that one north star breaking? That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of people don't have that north star at all. Well, yeah, a lot of people don't have that thing, and it actually makes me sad because I didn't realize it till very recently. Um, and you know, I I started working outside of breaking for some time. I was mm. a primary school teacher. Ah, nice. I worked with a lot of teachers, and their passion was teaching. Mm. But I would say, like, what is it that you do? Mm. And a lot of people don't have things that they do outside of their job. Like, mm. it's just like, oh, I just go to work and I go home. And they didn't understand, like, mm. that there was this thing that I did that allowed me to travel the world. And they mm. would, they'd be like, wait, you're going f- for a competition? And you're traveling for... And they're paying you? And they're... And, Couldn't and quite like, process no, it. No, and I'm like... And, and it made me realize that we do have this this world in, in hip hop and in breaking that is so different from, from the rest of the world. And I don't want to sound like I think I'm above anybody. I don't at all. I just feel like I'm really lucky to have something that I'm passionate about because uh, sometimes I remember thinking like, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? And then I realized like, Oh, you've been doing your purpose this whole time. Mm. Like, your purpose is your passion. What are you passionate about? And me breaking, even sometimes I'll get messages from from women just being like, oh, seeing how passionate you are about about what you do inspires me to like go to the gym today. And I'm like, oh, well, if I did that for one person, that's amazing. And there's got to be more as well. I hope so. We'll talk. <laughs> there's got to be more. You put it out there. And, and also you... When we talk about age, I'm 45, and I think to a lot, in a lot of respects, it, it, uh, if we keep on going, it's an okay sign. It says people, ah, okay, they're doing it, mm-hmm. you know? And we do the same for our peers as well. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I, yeah. lo- I love seeing Zia do the, do the body rock. And, you know, I love him doing, you know, what he does. Zia is, to me, he's like that okay sign. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. he's one of many. Yeah, I, I see um, there's a girl named Mayumi who's right now in the running for the Olympics. Mm-hmm. And she's, I think she's 40. Mm-hmm. Um, I might be off by a year. But every time I think about my age, I think about her. I'm like, she's 40. Yeah, that's she's cool. She's killing it. Killing it. Um, and there's so many examples in hip hop. Mm. I feel like it like makes you younger almost. Because mm. I, I don't feel my age. No. Sometimes people ask me my age and I'm like, I have to think about it because I'm like, wait, I feel, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel 27, yeah. but I'm def, but when I hang out with 27 year olds, I realize I'm yeah. definitely not <laughs> yeah, 27. We're all 20, yo. <laughs> <laughs> but, big up my crew, I don't know, but yeah, I know what you're yeah. saying. It's um, it's uh, it's just a few things, right? It's just yeah. a few things. Um, yeah, I think keeping keeping your passion alive keeps you young. Mm-hmm. I feel like once you lose something that brings you joy, it kind of it kind of slows things down. Mm. So I'll give you an example where it has nothing to do with hip hop. My stepdad um, was diagnosed with MS Mm -hmm. a few years back. Right. And he was so bummed out about it, uh, but he never let on like he was. He just kept, uh, his his thing has always been that he loves riding bike. Mm -hmm. That's his thing. Mm -hmm. And he rides bike every single day. I don't know, if he doesn't, he's in a mood. What, going out or... Biking, bike, know. like he he's done everything. So he goes everywhere around. He, he, he has like three different bikes in the house. Mm-hmm. He has ones with you know the ones that don't have brakes on them. He all mm-hmm. them all that I love stuff. It. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the doctor said to him like, "Wait, you don't even seem like you have MS. Like you don't, you're not presenting a lot of the symptoms." And then he told him, "Well, he's like, what are you doing?" He's like, "You know, I, I'm really active. I ride bikes. I I try to like kayak sometimes. Like I do all this stuff." And the doctor was like, "Oh." Well, that's why he's like the first. My first recommendation to you is keep moving. That's so cool. Keep moving, keep moving, and and he tells me that all the time. He's like, Candy, as soon as I stop moving, I feel like I have MS. Mm. But as long as I keep moving, I don't feel sick. I don't feel like there's something wrong with me. But as soon as like winter comes around or like yeah, you can't go out. Yeah, thing, yeah. he's like, I just I say I'll start getting all the symptoms. Yeah, and it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's psychological. Yeah. Psychological. <laughs> <laughs> so, can't take the 45 out of me, baby. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, so like, yeah, don't stop moving, man. Yeah, exactly, don't stop moving. Um, and again, just, you know, the fountain of youth. It's having the thing that you really, really love. Yeah. Uh, so, what brought you to UK? I came to the UK for the first time in 2007. Um, I was brought out to do an, an event called Be Supreme. Mm -hmm. I was judging that. And... Um, Oh my gosh, I remember the first time I came here, I had the worst jet lag ever. I didn't yeah. even know what jet lag was. Mm. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, that that was actually a really dope jam. I remember there was Bonnie and Clyde and I believe Roxy, and I don't even remember who her nice. partner was, but she won. Really? And I yeah. remember telling her, like, Roxy, you're going to be mm. you're gonna be famous. Yeah, like, yeah, you're yeah. so dope. And she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big up Roxy, big up Solid, big up Steph, all the girls. Come yeah. And, uh, and there's more. No, there's so many more. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I um I remember just that, and then it was like things just kept bringing me back here. Um, I came back again in two years for breaking convention. I was in the rocking show with Kenny. Mm -hmm. Um, so Ken Swift had the first rocking show on stage, and we came out with like four rocking OGs from brooklyn who've never toured or done any kind of theater in their life which was so interesting and hilarious <laughs> rest in peace china she was the other rocker on there she's actually rest just in peace just yeah. passed yeah and she was um incredible like just so she was so raw I just, they must have been like wild animals on that stage like these oh uh, out of their out of their habitat <laughs> there was one show i remember where it was call time was seven thirty, right Show was about to go on at eight, and we're like, "Where's Gina? Where's Gina? Where's Gina?" <laughs> and they're like, "Candy, you're just gonna have to do her part." And I'm like, "All right, fine. I'm on the side of the stage, ready to do her part." And then she just shows up, and she's like, "Hey guys, I'm here!" <laughs> like, wow. like no issue. And I was like, and we were like, "Where were you, girl? Like, call time was seven thirty, and she's like. The show starts at eight, though, right? And I was like, and she's like, yeah, I'm here, I'm on time. And she's like, I was getting my nails done. Oh my! And she shows us her nails, and they look amazing. Really? See, priorities, my see. See, that's that's what I like. Person with priorities. I was just like, yo, that is some New York stuff. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, you can't get raw than that. I'm like, but yo, she went on stage literally and just killed it. Cool. Like, it was amazing. Um, and we toured actually the in, almost the entire UK with that show. Um, and I actually, after that, had a really great relationship with Breaking Convention mm -hmm. and Sadler as well. So I continued to come out um, and do workshops. And then I met my son's father. Mm -hmm. And so I, I stayed here. I actually studied theater up north. Uh, what else? In University of Huddersfield. Huddersfield. Yeah. Oh my gosh, for a New York girl, that was like yeah. day and night. But, uh -huh. but I did it. I got my degree in theater. Um, and, and a degree in Huddersfield. And a degree in Huddersfield. <laughs> we just say UK when we put it on the CV. <laughs> <laughs> we got the Huddersfield crew, nothing personal. No, no, nothing personal. <laughs> yeah, I still love my Huddersfield crew, but um, yeah, I did that. I got my degree. Um, and then COVID happened. Yeah. That took yeah. me back home to New York. Wow. So uh, yeah, I went back to New York for three years, taught first grade. <laughs> Man, three years. That was a long time, wasn't it? I feel like I missed like 35 to, well, I was 34, 35, 34 to like 36 ish, seven. Like, well, now I'm 37. Um, so, Things yeah, stopped. just like my mid 30s were mm. like, I feel like a blur mm. because we were in a pandemic and mm. everything stopped. Mm. But I actually, on the bright side, appreciate that time because my son was still really young oh, and nice. I was able to just spend a lot of time with him. That's, so, that's super so cool. It was really cool. Like the time I probably would have been working or doing something, we were able to just go to the park and mm. spend time together in the house and, you know, things like that. So, And I took him, I ended up taking him on vacation I, at the end, towards the end of the pandemic oh. and we went to the Dominican Republic, which is where I was born. That's so cool. Yeah. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was crazy, but... Um, I started to kind of become part of the rat race. Mm. And I started to feel like um, I wasn't myself. Mm. I was really living to just support myself and my son. Yeah, yeah. And so I started to look for my passions again. And obviously, my North Star. Mm -hmm. um, and I came to London... Uh, I started to actually, I, I had already done the judges training with Renegade mm. before I moved back to New York. 
And so when things started opening back up, he was like, hey, like, you want a judge? Um, we need a certified judge for Undisputed. <laughs> Big up, Kev. Come on. Yeah, man. I have, I, I have so much gratitude for mm-hmm. Kev because he really, when I was going through a really hard time, I felt like I, had, I didn't know my place in breaking anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, because when you, start, you stop competing, your mom at that time, there was like no place for me. There was just like, I was like, what do I do? Mm. And he was like, you know what you do? You go where the need is. And the mm. need is female judges. We mm. do not have female judges. And I give him props because there's a lot of people that complain and say like, oh, you you know, there's not enough females on. He tried so hard. He would put a post and be like, I need, we need B-girls. Yeah. We need representation. Yeah. And he was like, you know, like, we need that. You, you've been doing this for this long. You have mm. the knowledge. Get certified. And he's like, and become that person who fills that need. Mm. Like, get your knowledge up on that side of things because it's gonna, we're gonna need it. This was pre Olympics. I smell a challenge, and Candy likes a challenge. Yes. <laughs> so I stepped up, and I, you know, I did my. Um, I had already been certified, but only in the there was like there's three like steps to it, and mm. I had only done step one. Um, and so I started doing the undisputed mm. events, which is like, as you know, super high level. So yeah, you're really getting that training. Eye, yeah. You're really getting your, your eye trained. And, uh, um, I started doing that and that's where I met you in LA. Come on. Yeah. That was amazing. Yep. Then I did UK champs. Mm. Um, but just by that time, I think undisputed LA was December and I saw Kevin, I said to him, I'm going to come see you for your birthday because I'm coming in January. I had to sort some things out for my son. Mm-hmm. So I came and uh, he was like, you know, you need to get with these people and train. And I started training with people here in London. Solid was mm-hmm. one of them. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is the first time that I actually feel motivated in training. Oh, that feeling yeah, been amazing. I was like, oh, I like this. I-, I was like, these people make me feel like this. Yeah. I need more of that. I'm going to stay here and do this. Yeah. yeah. And I started just doing more and more. And then I said, guys, I'm going to come for the summer because. Um, so last, last summer. Last yeah, summer yeah. Yeah. I was like, uh, my son was going to come see his dad. So I said, once, obviously I'm a teacher. Mm-hmm. I have my summers off and I'm paid. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to come just for the summer so that I'm close to my son in case he needs me. Yeah. But then I also get to train because yeah. I love training with you guys. It's a bulletproof um, idea. Yeah. yeah, Primal Instincts was, and they, they were like, they were yeah. like, sure, come. Yeah. So I came and it happened to like, it was all just really uh, kismic in the sense that I have a friend who also moved to the UK to work and he was like, I'm off for the summer. Can you house it for me? And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I did that. And as th- I'm coming to the end of my trip, Solid and I are sitting there and she says to me like, man, you just got to move here. Like, and I was like, you know what? I've been meaning to like do a master's degree. I'm going to start applying to some master's programs here. And I, and I was like, and I'm going to, what am I going to study? Let me think. And oh, wait, backpedal. I had applied for a job Hmm. here that I really wanted. That was like hip hop based. It was about, I was around uh, hip hop education and they, um, and I was like, sure. I was like, oh, I have to get it. Like, I'm so qualified for it. And then they called me and they didn't even consider me for an interview. So even more so, I was like, oh, I need some education. Like, I need to like level up somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I looked for a master's degree and I was like, what do I actually really want to get better at? Well, I love telling stories. I love being on camera. Mm. I like media. So I started looking at, um, journalism, art, media programs. And I found one randomly, applied to it. And and I, I did it. I go back home to New York. They call me. They're like, oh, we're going to interview you. Just so you know how crazy life is. <laughs> I got in. I go to the program. I sit down the first day and I ask everyone around me the same question. I'm like, why did you guys apply to this program? Like, um... I applied because I would like to be a commentator at mm. the Olympics. Mm. I want to be the mm. correspondent girl. Mm. I see all these correspondents at breaking events. They're not even B yeah, girls. Yeah, 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 I want to yeah. be that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm here. And they were like, what do you mean, why are we here? This is the best program in the world. This is one of the top three programs in the world. Like, 
and I and they were like, "How did you get in?" And I was like, "What do you what it, 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 it what?" I didn't even know it was one of the best programs in the world. Like, wow. I just literally picked it out of the internet and I was like, oh, that looks good. Wow. And so I, from based off my interview alone, I got into one of like the best master's programs in wow. London. I got goosebumps when you said that. For broadcasting. Yeah. So I'm like, right now, super feeling super blessed. I'm almost done. Wow. But yeah. So you've like, you're fully, fully trained. Fully trained. I- Radio, oh, TV, digital. Wow, no game. Producing packages, editing packages. I I actually just did a lecture where Jeremy Corbyn showed up today for the lecture. Like it was insane. He walked in and I was like, Yeah, double is, take. What? Yeah, I was like, Is this happening? Like, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, wow. That's um, crazy. Candy. I just feel like it just goes to show that you really like i said before you really create the life that you're in and you really manifest things because i did not i said i want this and i'm just gonna take steps yeah go 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 go. i'm just taking steps i'm just taking inspired action yeah and when i do that i i end up getting here and i end up getting this and i end up getting this and i actually just feel like i'm getting started yeah i don't blame you because you're taking it well within your stride and you're you're enjoying it yeah. It's almost like the it's almost like the road is unfolding in front of you and again sticking with the north star theory it's it's all written almost. And it always comes back to breaking. Mm. It always even even now doing my degree my final project was on breaking in the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, I get to interview my friends. Mm. Cool." <laughs> yeah. Totally. So it was an absolute result. Yeah, so it's it's really amazing. Like, um, yeah, my North Star. I think people don't realize. People are like, "Oh, I get to travel. I get to do this." But I'm just like, "Nah, breaking's just been so much more than that yeah, for yeah. me." Define it. Define it in one sentence. Oh, I always say, um, breaking is the act of making something out of nothing. You don't need anything. You don't need anything. You don't need any equipment, nothing. Mm. So you're making something out of nothing. You're just using yourself, your mm. soul, and your body and creating art. See? The cheap to enter root and creating completely within you. I love it. Yeah. And it's it gives you so much. Like, not just an art form, but a discipline. Mm. You know, fitness uh self confidence um the the uh ability to push even when you feel like giving up mm. and i think that not just breaking that's hip hop hip hop yeah that's hip hop as a whole it's the, the biggest religious matrix it's just it literally plug in and you're in that world yeah just be really good just yeah. make sure you're really good. No <laughs> yeah. well, so, don't be whack. Don't be just don't be shit. <laughs> be really good. I've literally said that. I'm like, just don't be whack, man. <laughs> yeah. Be yeah. fresh, you know. Be fresh. Just be fresh, you know. It's not easy. But we we've got to do it. You do it too. Um, <laughs> what's the future? Oh. I think the future now is um is taking the ability and the opportunities that we have and bringing it back to culture. Mm. To the essence. Yeah. Because we've never had what we have now. Mm. Everybody talks about, oh, yeah, back in the 80s, it blew up and we didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. If you want to stay in the 80s, cool. We know what we did wrong then. Mm. Um, Now we've got a different influx and it's a different boom. Mm. And... We really, if if we say we know better, let's do better. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I think where we do better is we bring it back. God, I love that. See, that's that war cry. It's a war cry talk. Yeah, absolutely. You can sit there and say, oh, this isn't a sport and be mad about it. Yeah. Or you can take it and, and run with it and mm. make it your own. Like, they always say, that if you can't beat them, join them. Mm. And then make it your own. Mm. You know, like, you don't have to. I feel like. It's like that's where you look at like the billionaires and all those people that mm. that 
probably got involved in things that maybe they weren't really like excited about, mm. but they were like, oh, I know that I've got to do this in order to take over and mm. do this, you know? Mm. Um, uh, my, my crewmate, Taekwon, calls it hacking the system. It's a hacking the system. That's right. You know, because sometimes actually, uh, I'm not suggesting that Kurt Cobain wasn't like a a lyricist or but but I just get the feeling and probably something that Amy Winehouse I just feel like perhaps they could have done anything and still killed it they just happened to have been at that point at that right time and they managed to do that because it did, didn't st- it it's it just looks to me that they just they just used the art as the prototype for what they felt like they wanted to do at the time. And sometimes that's it kind, of, kind of following what you're saying there. Perhaps um, it's not so much a hack, it's that, it's that if you aren't from a certain thing, that allows you to think a little bit different mm-hmm. and then you're automatically jumping ahead mm-hmm. because you're actually hacking, <laughs> hacking a, a sense of what a system might be. Yeah, you're almost working backwards because you're finding the goal and you're saying, okay, who else has done that? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to get there by kind of following their tracks. Yeah. But once I'm there, what am I going to do with it? Yeah. Oh, I can, like, now that I'm here, I can do stuff. But if you never get there, you're mm. not going to be able to do anything. Mm. If you're always over here talking mm. smack about him, mm. you're never going to get here. No. Because what's that going to do? It's just going to close your doors. Mm. And I almost, I had to learn that the hard way again. I'm so glad I have people like Renegade who told me like, are you going to be a bitter buddy or are you going to like <laughs> get off your butt and mm. get involved? Mm. You're never going to get a seat at the table if you're just online complaining about Hell yeah. the fact that you don't have a seat at the table. Yeah. Knock the, knock the table over, you know? No, no, <laughs> like, exactly. Or create your own table or your own lane. And that actually, you know, happens a lot, especially with women. Like, we don't really... I've even been in rooms where like the conversations are going and they're listening to the guys and I'm barely getting a word in. Mm. And it's like, um, and I could just, I could sit there and complain. You guys aren't listening to mm, me, mm, mm, mm. but I'm just like, okay, mm. all right. You're not going to listen to me now, but mm. I start to do more. I start to stick around. I, I show my value. Mm. And then all of a sudden Oh, we need an uh, an expert opinion. Can you come in? Oh, now I have an expert opinion. <laughs> you know? Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's Another thing. Breaking yeah. teaches you. Yeah. It's a it's a uh what is it called? What what is it when people say um it's a long game? Mm, it is a long game. It's the marathon, not yeah. the race. Um and also th- that there's a spiritual aspect to that. You know, just meditate on it for a second. Let it let you know it is what it is, and you could you you can be at peace with that as well, and yeah. just let it let it ride, mm-hmm. because you will get ultimately you know it will you will capture it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Very kung fu esque, isn't it? Yeah, stay stay authentic to yourself. Yeah. Stop worrying about being cool or being hired or being whatever, and just do the work. Mm. Just do the work. Do what you what you what brings you joy, mm. and then things line up. Just like I just applied to something because I really thought I want to elevate my skills, and it ends up being much bigger than I yeah. ever thought. Most of the time, that's how it happens, isn't it? Mm, yeah, of course, of course it is. Well, Candy, it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh-huh. It's been a pleasure too. Thank we you for having me. We made it happen. <laughs> we made it happen. <laughs> Wow, send some knowledge, y'all. Uh, that's about it. That's all we got for now. Uh, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend, of course. Um, another 500 plus podcast there for you to sit back, relax. Maybe do 24 hours and see how you get on. Uh, you might learn a thing or two. Uh, uh, crime don't pay, neither do they. All right, don't talk to an hour, I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Thank you, Candy. <laughs> Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>